Good afternoon, January 31st, the necess necessity of forgiveness. Remember, O Lord, our compassion and unfailing love, which you have shown from long ages past. Do not remember the rebellious sins of my youth. Remember me in the light of your unfailing love. For you are merciful, O Lord. Psalms 25, 6-7. Most of us are familiar with the prayer acronym ACTS, which stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and supplication. It's meant to guide our prayers so that we don't just jump right into asking God for things. That's not a bad idea. Though the Bible also talks about coming to God like a child, Matthew 19, 14, and children feel no shame in immediately asking for what they want. In any case, one absolutely indispensable part of prayer is confession, and one absolutely indispensable answer to prayer is forgiveness. Yes, we need to trust God, and yes, we need guidance, but we also need to be right with God before any of that. We need His forgiveness, otherwise guilt and shame will, re will overwhelm us. Remembering God of His promises can also seem a little manipulative, like a boy bugging his dad about his dad's promise to play catch with him after work. Even though his dad may be exhausted after a really long day, but God is different from a tired dad. He delights to honor his promises. Honoring his promises gives him glory. Like most of us, the psalmist consider the possibility that the trouble he's in now is due, at least in part, to mistakes he made in his past. Do not remember the rebellious sins of my youth, he prays. But he also remembers that God is good and merciful and will to, willing to forgive. That's key. Bottom line. It's so hard to believe that we are forgiven because we need forgiveness so often. This fact hurts our pride, yet God graciously gives us what we need. Psalms 134. Good morning. This is Daniel. Welcome to Park Talks. Park it. Let's talk about it. What if we have too many options? Too much variety. There's just too much to choose from. Here's a test. Go to any big box store and shop for a TV. Options? Really? What are you going to pay for the options? What about the variety that they have there? Huge amount. Um, you could safely say at most that I've been to, there's a dozen or more of TVs. If we're looking for cars, remember a week or two ago, we talked about divided we all fall? What if I had a car lot with 4,200 cars on it, and you could have any one, any one, just one? You probably want to go through and check them all out real good. They all got different options. They're all different colors. They all ride, feel, and look different. 4,200. What if you landed on a particular brand, okay, a brand, and out of that brand, you had 30,000 variations of that brand? In options, you've got... In cars, how many different brands, Chevy, Ford, Buick, Kia, Hyundai, Toyota, Honda, BMW, Mercedes. I mean, you go through, go buy an oil filter and see how many different brands of cars are out there. How many different brands, okay? Each car has different options. So once you say, okay, I want to buy this particular brand of car. Well, now you got to get a motor and pick out what motor you want, what color do you want it, do you want heated seats, heated steering wheel, do you want electric windows, electric seats, you know the option list. It's that little blue and white tag on the side that says you're going to pay a whole lot extra for something that probably ain't worth it anyhow or will break you easily. Okay, so now we got options, and as we look at options, we're looking at possibilities where there could be failure. Ooh, we'll get back to that maybe. Now, two's not a great option either. Black or white, yes or no. At times, that's the only thing you need. Red or blue. Look at where two's gotten us in this country. In sales, it said, offer only a few options. Or if you're helping somebody set an appointment schedule, would this time or that time work? Don't just hand them a free open calendar. The method, the method that they refer to frequently is called the KISS. K-I-S-S. -S. It's an acronym, meaning keep it Simply stupid. Not insulting anybody, but just keep it down to the absolute, bare, easy to understand level. Even your options. Who remembers that one branded car many years ago that I think they came out in the 90s, the Yugo? 
You didn't have any air conditioner, no power, nothing. I don't think that they had, had a radio. At that time, cars came with regular cigarette lighters. This one had none, no ashtray. Uh, very, very basic. Brand new car off the lot. I believe the target market was about a $4,000 or just under $4,000 price car. Get you back and forth, a little three-cylinder, very fuel economical. Uh, economical. I actually used to own one of those when I lived down in Florida. What I gather is just a few options. You know, three to eight make more sense than aiming at 4,200, such as what religion has done, or like Christianity has done in this country, being the number one practice religion, having over 30,000 different versions of this only one practice. How can anybody choose anything? How can anybody find anything that even looks right? You got people running around calling themselves a Christian, but their friends, their dog, and their family don't know. I mean the ones that live under their own roof. Christians make commitments, keep commitments. Their, their word is their bond. That is a huge thing with a lot of people. I just don't want to right now. I just don't feel like it. And then here's another difficulty. Once I've made the investment of commitment of whatever life choices I have made, what options or did I need to guide those choices? With all of the I, me, and my leading our options, it's easy, it's easy to see this becoming a great foundational way of thinking and a new, and a new religion that could be formed or a new version of a religion because of the all I, me, and my pride, lust, and greed. I want, give me, give me, look at me, look at me, ooh, she's cute. Yeah, you can move religion, you can create a religion around that. They had temple prostitutes back in the Old Testament. I know other religions that use inappropriate manner with other people, and they say it's acceptable. I mean, some religions even sacrifice their own kids. So, all in the name of worshiping some kind of a god or a deity that they could not, um, that they could, they could, most of them could see. Touch, taste, feel. So if all the me, my, and I mentality, the pride, lust, and greed, has opened an opportunity for foundational thinking of creating, this is what I'm going to make my church look like, we totally removed the concept of God operating that. Is this number 4,201 religions? Is this number 30,000, or is it just another variation of one of these 30,000s? It just based how you how you want to think. Well, yeah, Christ died for me, but I don't think he was much, or he was too much of, or I don't think I don't think. That's the problem with most people. They either don't think, or they think way too much. Or I disagree with what the Bible says. When did God ask you your opinion on the Bible? Thank goodness that you're reading it. Now, quit reading it for things to contend with to argue about, read it and absorb it like the dirt would seed in the, in, the, in, the, in the sowing time. Absorb it. And then see what happens. See how it grows. Just let it soak into your life. You won't be creating another religion. You won't be creating a variation of one. What you'd be creating is a very different individual. We are all different individuals. The way we think, the way we talk, the way we act. Way we respond. Every single person even looks different. That's a lot of options. Not everybody's going to go to the same restaurant and grab the same burger and head out down the road and smile all the way. How many options have you even got a restaurant? Stand in a line around noon hour with an individual standing at the front counter, taking their time, staring at the same menu they have seen for 10 years or five years or even in three months. Still don't know. Why? Too many options. Somebody close to me one time was in a vehicle accident, needed to replace their vehicle. It was total. So they were searching a lot of the internet websites for a new vehicle, a replaceable, a replaceable vehicle. And they're extremely picky what they wanted, which I understand. It was a lot of money they were getting ready to, to make. And they had particular needs they wanted to fulfill with this vehicle. Had to be all-wheel drive, things like that. So as time goes on, I start, like, every day they're sharing... 
dozens and dozens of vehicles with me. Hey, look at this. What do you think about that? Hey, what about this? Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at that one. It's, it's white and that one's red and this one's red with a blue interior. And there was, they're all over the United States. And this individual is getting ready to, to pay the delivery fee from West Coast or South Coast or whatever it takes to get this particular vehicle. Okay, a lot of options. After months of going through this, two or three months, once the insurance had settled, uh, some advice that came their way was, how about if you limit your options? You've got way too many options on the radar right now. Just cut it down to, you know, three, four, five, and then select from that. You know the brand you want. Don't be optional about that. You know, you know, things that you absolutely will not go without. So select, cut it down to three, four, five, six of those, and then spend a couple of days looking at those and negotiating on those. If you only have two options, then they won't, say, flex on your price. You want to pay 30000 and they won't come below 35000 Well, guess what? That car is no longer an option. They won't move on your price, or it could be an option if you move your price. So now what things are you willing to change on? Even in religion, and this is what I want to take a, to take a point at for a second. What areas of your religious walk, the church you go to, do you mind bringing up options? Well, they don't say that or do that or be this way or be that way. What can we look for? Again, let's go back to that big box store. You go to the TV, go to the TV section of the big box store. How many options of TVs? Dozen? I just wanted to buy a, a TV. I walked in there. I didn't know that. Was I going to get a 22-inch, a 32-inch, a 42, a 45, a 50, 55, 62, curved? Do you want 3D, 2D, high def? We're getting into options. All right. Now, let's leave religion alone for a while, okay? Because there's a lot of options in religion. We covered that over the last few weeks. Cars, we're going to leave that alone. And TVs, even the big box stores, because we can all agree there's a lot of options in there. Where else can we look to see way too many options that influence our life on a regular daily basis? Let me think, let me ask you this. Where could you say or do almost anything you wanted and people wouldn't notice? How about in background noise? Background noise. Play the radio for background noise. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, you work at a boat company. They got a radio in there? Yes. Okay, they got a radio going all day? Yep. You sing along with it? You try to ignore it. Try to ignore it. Yeah. But then there's there's times where it's silent and I'm like, no music. Yeah. And then everybody's like... But still, it's background noise. And if it wasn't there, you'd go, oh, where's, where's... Because you got trained into it. You got habited into it. It's yeah. just part of being there now. You walk in and radio's not on. What, are we closed today? Yeah. Background noise. Anything. Even at night. Uh, some people yeah. will listen I, to fans. And... It's winter. And I still had the paint on last night. But I... Could Dude, sleep. <laughs> I, when I was in the barracks, I used to sleep with a fan on me all the time. I'm great big old fans blowing at one yeah. end of the barracks. And, well, you got to keep the smell moving. True. <laughs> keep the that. snores kind of blocked out, too. <laughs> but see, we got patterned to that in the military with that fan going, blocking out the snoring, blocking out the odors, and everything else. And now all of a sudden, we're at home, we got a fan blowing on us. I didn't even think about the odors. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't it as long as I was. <laughs> that was a lot more funky feet to deal with in other parts. <laughs> what about background noise? Remember a couple years ago, one of them sporting things they had was a Super Bowl and some singer up there and part of her female anatomy fell out of her wardrobe malfunction? That happened a couple times, didn't it? It's been a few times. It's been a few times. Yeah, they talked about it, noticed it for a moment, but you can't unsee what you see, right? Yeah. How about lyrics and music? Yeah, we're going there. Yeah. Here's why. Because as I was putting this together, I'm like, you know, variety and options. You've got more variety and options in music than you do in food. I didn't think about that. Yeah, ways of even cooking food. Mm -hmm. You've got more, every country, every culture, every, not just decade. What I learned well, sometimes music genres would be added every couple, three years. Yeah. This will blow you away. Electronic music. You're familiar with it, right? Yep. Played in a lot like of clubs. Like and the techno type tech stuff. Tech is in that list. Give me a, just how many variations of electronic music do you think there is? Just in this country. I don't know. Almost 400 different versions of techno. Dubstep is in there, techno. Yeah, listen to it all. What is music? Uh, uh, organized sound. 
with language, yeah. organized sound. Mm -hmm. Do we use language and music together? Music is a language. Mm -hmm. When a person le learns A, B, C, D, E, F, G, sharps and flats, minors and diminished, and they're learning a language. Mm -hmm. You don't teach music, you're actually teaching a language skill. Because you take some musicians that I've worked with, and they can look at a music score, and they know that line is a C. Yeah. It's a middle C on the keyboard, right about where your belly button lines up on the piano. When you, how do you know where to stand in front of the piano? Put the belly button on, on middle C, you'll be okay. And just stay there. Your arms move out. Really? Well, where's the other C? About eight keys later, either direction. <laughs> it's really easy. I teach people, if you can count to seven, or for the talented ones, eight, and for the <laughs> gifted ones, 12, and you can understand A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Mm -hmm. you have the basic foundations to learn music on any instrument you want. Because at least in the Western culture, for everything I've seen, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A sharp, A flat, G sharp, G flat. And you'll notice on the 4U2C ministry, on our banner logo, it says 4U2B sharp. Mm -hmm. So for any of you musicians out there who might have already figured it out, a B sharp is a C. And it means for you to see. Well, what could begin with C that we would really need to pay attention to? How about Christ? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for you to see Christ is where, where we're aiming with the for you to be sharp ministry. Mm -hmm. But I want you to look at that B sharp and go, why would somebody go B hashtag or B pound symbol or whatever you want it to be? That's what most people would take it as. Yeah, it's B sharp. Go play an instrument, you'll figure it out. So a pattern of sound. This is what one of the dictionary definitions were. It's a lot. A pattern of sound made by an instrument or by singing or by a combination of both or the written symbols representing these sounds. That's a, that's a high educated individuals. They sat down and figured out what music actually defines to be. That sounds pretty good to me. I'll, I'll accept it. Here we go. Classical music. We're going to look at a dozen different genres. How many different genres of music can, are there? Not a dozen. Not dozens. Not a few dozen. If you said a dozen dozen, 144, you'd be really close. There's somewhere over 100 just in the lessons. I think it was the 1960s. Hmm. 100 different types of music. You know how hard it is on the phone or on like GarageBand and, and my computer to make my own genre? I did. When our band was operational, there was a genre of music we were doing. It's called titanium music. It's not metal. It's not rock. Titanium, the reason for it. And with Unsilenced Redemption, people will learn that in a while. I just created another genre of music. Really? Okay. Well, let's see. Classical music. Come on. How many? Throw a number out there. Two digits. Ten? Classical? Classical music. Double it. Twenty. Twenty? Twenty. Yeah. Folk music. Thirty-three. Jazz. I love jazz. What kind? Uh, jazz. Jazzy jazz. There's 52. Wow. I learned this. I know. I was I saying that. As I was writing this last week. I'm going, wow, blues. I play the blues. What kind of blues? Detroit blues? Louisiana blues? Mississippi blues? Chicago style blues? New York blues? West Coast blues? Upper West Coast blues? Washington State blues? Oregon blues? I found them. Blues. 28 oh. different styles. Country. Popular in this area. Country, 34 different types of country music. There's country and western and 32 other ones. How about hip hop? 58. Pop. Pop music, 54. Reggae. I thought it was just reggae. 8. R&B, 21. This will get, get your attention. I'm going to save it. Psychedelic. 7. How about avant-garde? Four, and one of them is just called noise. It's just called noise. Just like I played a sample track of it, and white noise sounds better. Hmm. You could not consider the people making this noise musicians. I've had students who have never held a guitar. Couldn't tell you the names of the strings. They choke the neck. You grab it with all three fingers, and they just start grinding on the strings. Mm -hmm. That sounded better than this. I've heard saxophone players in their first couple of months, and if you've ever heard a reed instrument player or, or a brass instrument player, 
they their armature is not formed. They're squeaking and sharpening and tooting and hooting and can't, I mean, but they're doing their best. Sounded better than this noise because they took multiple instruments of people who could not play even in rhythm and they recorded them. For what reason, I don't know. I hit the delete key on worse on that, on that quality of stuff. But let's jump back to the one I've been saving. Remember I asked which one was almost 400? Electronic? Electronic music, EDM, dubstep, that stuff. There's almost 400 different styles, like 398. Mm -hmm. How about rock and roll? 158. 158 styles? Styles of rock and roll. Not artists. Rock and roll. I'm not doing the math on all these numbers. If somebody wants to roll back in a show and add them all up, these numbers come off of Wikipedia, off of a study, off of music. It was really kind of cool. All right? Now, we know what music is. It's organized sound. And it's organized lyrics, or it's both put together in an organized pattern. Okay. In this pattern, what are we not listening to? In background noise, it's, we're not listening to it. Everybody goes, I don't listen to that. I, I, it's on, but I don't listen to it. So what are we not listening to? I know it's a dumb question. But what are we not listening to? What lyrics? Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Did he go away and leave you all alone? I got a bad desire. What could that lyrical be all, all about? Going to take you to an amusement park and put you on a roller coaster? I don't think so. What's some of the other artists? Here's one. Here's, here we go. Think of an artist. Pick any artist that you're familiar with. Okay, Ronnie, don't say their name. Don't say the song. I want you to pick a non Religious artist, something from the world that you hear at work all the time, something you even catch yourself singing to or bopping your toes to. Just picture one. Okay. Now, how many songs do they, does this band have out? Yeah. Many? How many songs? Yeah. I mean, there's some artists, you think, and there's dozens and dozens of CDs created. There's 12 to 13 different songs on every single CD, and they've been out for 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. right? Maybe not CDs, but the music's been out there. Think of one song. Anyone. What does that lyrics give attention to? Or who or where? Let's take that Bruce Springsteen song we just had. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Did he go ahead? Did he go away and leave you all alone? I've got a bad desire. I'm on fire. Mm, I'm on fire. Mm, I'm on fire. Does he do to you those things that I'll do? Yeah, I'm on fire. Just, just the lyrics. You don't have to say where that's going, but you, you know in your core that's where it's going. But we call this entertaining. Another one, there's a band out there called ACDC. And yeah, people will get mad that I'm hacking on their favorite old tunes. But guess what? When Jesus Christ comes into your life, you're a new person. All things are passed away. All the old is dead. A new creation has come. Mm -hmm. Or has it? What if I keep putting the same food from you? Okay, so I weigh 400 pounds. And I eat the Golden Arches sandwiches a dozen a day. Okay? And I go in and what do they call that? bariatric or something like that. I just absolutely eat wrong. And I have all these surgeries, literally changing nothing else in my, in my system, just surgeries. As soon as I heal up, the doctor says, you can go now. And I decide not to go to the gym, go back to the golden arches, return right back to my habits. What am I going to become? I'll go right back to where I was. Yep. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I've done wrong in my life. Forgive me, Lord, and I am now a Christian. And I go home and beat the wife. Go to work, act, talk. Now, I'm not saying that the moment that we put our, our seed in the ground or the moment that we make a confession of Christ, that everything in life will change. Because if it does, that's so weird, that's called a miracle. Okay? But remember Jesus teaches about the parable where people literally just seed gets scattered on the ground. We talked about the parking lot getting corn seed. How long is that going to take to grow? It won't. The birds will eat it. The sun will scorch it. It'll turn out to popcorn in August. So what are we giving light to? Would it be a fair assessment to say that most music played and accepted in the world today give glory 
and recognition to things of pride, lust, and greed, as well as the way one believes. That's pretty much slicing music into four categories. It's either going to resolve with pride, lust, greed, or how a person believes. And I you put religious music in there, too. And I don't care what culture you go to. You go to China. Same thing. Things we listen to are called programming. This is called that for a good reason. We're being programmed and taught what to and how to think, at l or at least getting enough programming to confuse us. And then we choose not to. You give me too many. Remember the 4200 option car lot? You're going to get one free. you got to go pick one out. Unlimited time. Take your lifetime to figure it out. But I only get one. How long is it going to be till you just give up? If you've got a car in a driveway, it won't be long until I'm like, you know something? I'm thanks, but not interested. Yeah. Okay, now 30000 Okay, so I was going to buy a, a Pontiac. Now there's 30,000 variations on the other lot of Pontiac. You, 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 you took all the other ones out. You're not getting a Beamer. You're not getting a Mercedes. You're getting a Pontiac. A brand new Pontiac in 2021. Where do you get a, Pontiac, a brand new Pontiac in 2021? But either way, it's my car lot. At what point do you just throw your hands up and say, I'm not interested? Where else do we find variety in a lot of options? How about colleges? How about in college? Now we chose what college to go to. Look at these kids graduating high school this year. They're all boogered about which college they're going to go to. I'm going to go here. I want to go there. They, I got things out to five, six, seven different colleges, which is smart. But you've got a lot of variety, a lot of options out there. Now, once you get to college, you're going to sit down and go through your curriculum. More options, more variety. How about sports? Is there variety in sports? Well, I don't like this. I like that. Well, I don't like that team. I like that team. Well, I don't like that. Dude. I've seen fist bites over that. How about restaurants? We already, and, and food. How about dating websites? <laughs> that could be a close and personal one for some people. What about assumptions? Oh, my goodness, do we have variety in assumptions? We don't have variety out here this morning. It's 31 degrees to five inches of snow on the ground. Cold as smack, wrapped up in blanket going, yee. But we're here. How about color? Ronnie, you know how many colors there are? Huh. 256 million. Really? 256 million different Panatone colors. Yep. So red. I like red. Pick one. Pick your favorite color. Blue. Blue. Okay. My wife loves blue. So what shade? Duh. Oh. Uh, there's so many different shades. They started giving them go to go to go to the uh, uh, the hardware store and go over to the paint section. <laughs> they got computers that mix a color. You can go home now, take a picture of your favorite pillow on the sofa, and walk in there, and they can scan it and they can make paint to match that. That's pretty cool. But when you got 256 million different colors in the world, I got to ask this obvious question: Where do they come from? Where did color come from? Who made, who invented it? God. Yeah. When he created everything, it just had color to, to distinct to, to break it up. So you like red. Good. Where else do we see options? How about the options that are in marriage? You know there's options in marriage? You could marry the same gender. You could marry opposite gender. You could choose not to marry. And then let's just whole pick the whole I want a different gender. I'm gonna be a puppy dog today. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that got weird, but it's supposed to get weird. Because I thought the Bible told me man, man shall have his wife and wife has man, her man and period. That's it. That's just where it goes. But that's what the Bible says. So if you choose not to believe it, that, well, I guess that's your life. That's an option. When there are this many options of things that we can see, taste, touch, feel, figure out. How can and how is a person going to choose the one God to follow? And there I use a lowercase g, intentionally. It's my TV shows. It's my sitcoms. It's my pharmaceuticals. It's my addiction. It's my anxiety. It's my fear. It's my depression. It's my food. It's my home. It's my job. It's my, my, me, me, I, I, I. Wow. Got a lot of gods in a person's life. My fun, that's what I want to do. It's my fun. It's my kind of fun. I'm going to go have fun. Well, we also did a park talks on that if you roll back a few tapes, a few weeks. 
what is fun? Remember we said some people sitting in a crowd and uncomfortable bleachers watching a bunch of people in tights run up and down with a pig skin in their hand chasing some goalposts happens to be their element of fun. Wearing a foam finger on their hand and a hat on their head and being drunk and painting yourself funny colors is their element of fun. I wonder where they got programmed. I wonder who taught them that. If we go back to the Old Testament, remember when uh, Samson, they were going into like gladiator type place when he leveled that, that arena. So back then the fun was watching people kill each other and animals eat each other. Now we just put them in a ring. We put bleachers high rise on both sides all the way around. And then we send our young men and women in there to beat each other up and teach society this is normal. This is, I believe, the reason a lot of people have no idea who God truly is. Because they can't find a one religion, so they have several. They worship, praise, and teach that religion to their kids. The religion of TV. The religion of job. The religion of I have to do this. Forget about God. There is no God concept. Is there God in a person's life? Where is he at in their week? Those who say Sunday morning for a couple, three, four hours, it's a swing and a miss. You've got all those up. you got what, 136 hours in a week or something like that? And you got two hours or three hours in the morning. That includes getting pretty, putting your pretty clothes on and driving to church. Let's make it three and a half hours. Some people go off for dinner right afterwards. Air conditioned or heated, comfy seats. What about the people that complain the seats are seats suck at church? You ever heard of them? Yeah. So where do you draw? Where do people draw the truth for their life? There's so many options. Where does the real truth come from? People want to know the one true God. They want to know what He's done for us. They want to have a relationship with him. And we've talked about many times how Christ is literally just misrepresented to people. God is misrepresented. Then the truth that you draw for your life, where do you draw the truth that you teach others? So if a lot of people go, I don't read the Bible because I don't understand it. And I've heard that. I don't read the Bible because I don't like it. I've heard that. I don't read the Bible because I don't believe it. I've heard that. Now we're talking about the Bible. This is inspired by, written by man, but inspired by God. Okay. There's too much arguing, uh, whatever. What I hear is a bunch of excuses. If we're going to read the Bible with the intentional, with the heart position of, I'm going to find what's wrong in here, so I have something to complain about. You're not going to be receiving much. You're going to be glossing over the most of it. I was there for a while. When you switch in your heart that I'm going to dig into here for some truth, for some reality, for my life, Ronnie, not for yours, for my life. I found the, the reality of this in John 4, 6, or 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Oh, so you go to the sporting arena, and there's only one way in. And there's someone standing at the door going, you're covered, man. But this is the only way in. And you think, man, I forgot something in the car. <laughs> I'm going to run around to the back side of the building, grab what I need in my car. I'll be right back. And you see, a, you might maybe see a door over there. Someone goes, dude, there's a door on the back side over here. You can get in over here. There's only one way to God. And that's through Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. According to the Bible, there is only one way and no other variety. No options to get to God. It is through the relationship that you will have with Jesus Christ. There's no variety. There's no options. Here you will have to accept what he has done. You'll have to believe it. Follow it. It should lead you and guide you and grow you. If it doesn't grow you, there's no God in you. None. God grows. He spoke. Organized sound. Organized sound, he spoke, and all that we see and know is created. So if I go out and plant, and I say, corn, hurry up and grow, corn, hurry up and grow, I'm speaking and creating life, right? No, I'm creating foolishness. But if I plant and step back and let time, a couple, three months go by, some rain, and maintain and monitor, guess what I'm going to have about late August? I'm going to have eight feet corn stalks, six feet corn stalks in, my, in the field. 
I, there's nothing I can say or do to make it happen. Where I'm going with this is a person gives their life. They make a commitment to the Lord. They, have, they need to start ingesting things of God, his people. Learning, patterning their, their prayer, their worship after those that they found. As long as the people that are attending a church or a gathering, which is the church, is the gathering. As long as they're attending this gathering and there is God's word, the growable seed is being planted. If a person is going to a church for a period of time, and I'm going to say a good period of time, it could be six months, it could be a year, and for some it could be a few years longer than that. It took this guy about eight years. So this dirt's old and hard and ruined, but God softened it. Now, after a few, year, a few months, few years, you don't find any growth in that church, I'd highly recommend reconsidering where you're at and going where you grow. What happens if the field doesn't grow? What's the option? Dies right? There's no neutral ground. The cornfield is either going to grow or everything I plant is not going to grow, right? There's no variety or options here, not when it comes to God. When you consider the truth, you have to get rid of the confusion. You have to eliminate the misrepresentation, the untruth, the manufactured religion. How do we really get to know God? and serve God if we have no idea, if we're just ingesting the garbage on TV all the time. There are preachers that are great cheerleaders. They're cheerleaders with a microphone. They're yelling and screaming. There's two or three of them I see on YouTube. There's a lot of them on TV. But you know, TV has this thing that bothers me. It's called programming. The Bible, it's the same story. Been the same story all along. The only thing that's changed is the translations, and man did that. So if something's lost in translation, if something's left out of the Bible, don't blame God. Don't blame the Bible. Blame the one that changed the original. But quit looking for things that are wrong with it. What happens if nothing's wrong with it? It's just the way it's impacting your life. That's, uh, someone said something to me, uh, different cover, same word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yep. That's not right. It's exactly right. Same word, just different cover. Mine might have a burgundy leather bound, and yours might be a hard book with blue and white writing on it. Yours might have a language of another culture that you're more intimately familiar with than the one I'm reading. There are some people, and I've heard pastors even say that if it's not out of the King James Version, it's adulterated, it's not the Word of God, and the people who read that will go to hell. Well, I'm glad that pastor's not God, because I'd go to hell. Most of Park Talks is pulled out of the ESV and the NIV version. Why? Because that's today's English. That's today's language. That's why. I don't read Greek. I don't read Hebrew. Or this would be in Greek or, Greek or Hebrew. There's religions created around specific language. If the creator has touched someone's life or been involved in someone's life, there is a change. We've already learned that these changes take several years. In my life... The truth had became so smeared that there was no way of understanding or knowing or figuring out God or who God was. There really wasn't. I grew up in church. No, I was there uh, three, four, and sometimes five and six times a week. Sunday was twice, Wednesday night, Friday night, in a, in a Christian type, one of their versions. And if you wasn't there all these times, you was no good. You wasn't going to heaven. And then the other thing we kept learning, and, and it's a young age, so I could have misinterpreted what I was learning, that if you didn't go to this particular building, you were going to hell. The 2,000 or 3,000 people that went to this building in the 70s and 80s are the only ones going to hell. And I don't know that after that because in 1980, mom and dad decided we needed to go to a different church. Just We went to another version of the same religion, Christianity. They just taught a little different understanding. I think I was Protestant. Still, it's no, another. No, no. Yeah, I know exactly. I was, I think there's I, apostolic, evangelical, Protestant. You know, there's thirty thousand versions of Christian. Yeah, yeah. Protestant. And, well, I, I was well, looking back. I mean, I was raised <laughs> even uh, like Italian, Roman cat as a Catholic. Yeah, it's Catholic, yeah, yeah. Catholicism, yeah. Roman Catholic, yeah, yeah. When you get into religion, there's so many subdivided religions, it's ridiculous. And, uh, well, I mean, I went to different churches as a kid, too. Uh, 
One, the, the church bus would pick us up. Mm -hmm. That's how my wife used to get to church. My dad used to drive the church bus. We used to go. Mm -hmm. That's when I went. At a young age, when my, my friends went. You know, at a, at a pretty young age. So, okay, Danny, you talk like you were one way and you got somewhere else. How'd you get there? Well, this I had to really dig in and answer this question. And these are literally the church, the church answers, and it's all I've got. But here's my answer. How did I get where I am now? There are just a few simple things. I prayed. I hoped, which is faith. And I even went to church several times a week. But the problem is I was doing the same thing back in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And there was no change. So my buddy who's been in church, I met him in church 20 years, 21 years ago. My best friend. He asked me, when I, when I came back, when I retired out of the military and I started my a real faith walk with God, he asked me a real gut punch of a question. And I, I wasn't sure how to answer that. And I answered it in the moment, too. He said, what's the difference in your religious or your, your experience with church and God now versus what it was, you know, about 10 or 12 years earlier? And after reflecting for a short period of time, the only honest answer I could give was I was regularly going home watching TV, listening to the same music. Getting back to this, my life had became so smeared that there was no way I could understand who God was. During that time in my life, I prayed, I hoped, I even thought I had enough faith. But the problem was I kept going back to the exact same things in my life, me. I was always satisfying me. Me was the only thing of importance. When I was going to church, it was because I wanted to make sure that the kids and my wife at the time, when she was alive, got to know God. It wasn't for me. It really wasn't. I didn't spend time reading the Word. I didn't spend time in the right music. I didn't spend time being an example. No, I was being taught religious movements and religious words like I had been taught younger. And the way I got through church was I knew the language. I knew how to speak the Scripture, but I just wasn't going to live it. Until my buddy called me on it. Well, that particular chapter in my life when I went back to church... Everything I knew at the time was gone. Everything. I had nothing to lose. I think a lot of times people have to get to that level in life. To where they're literally flat out on their back and they got to look up and say, God help me. What I pictured one time was I was like, picture a foxhole. That the guy who dug it just loved digging foxholes and didn't stop and just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I jumped in it. And there's no way I could climb out. There was no way. You couldn't reach the sides together. There was nobody, nothing. Matter of fact, I think when anybody walked by, they threw me another shovel. Said, dig your way out. Can't do that either. You just bigger, build a bigger, bigger pit. Hey, you ought to try drinking some of this stuff. The doctors were saying, take these. The VA was saying, take that. No idea. But when I finally got to the point of saying, all right, I surrender, God. It's all you. I'm done. It's on, it's, it's on you, God. That's when the change happened. I find that most people like me in church are still living in the world and finding fun in their past. I didn't feel, think, or act as a new creation. I found that even some of the pastors had the same issues with their kids and spouses. Some still even entertained themselves with desires of the, the past, their old life, music, TV, sports, hobbies, as well as even habits and thought. But once I realized that God so loved the world that he gave me something, he gave me his only son. And whosoever believes in that, they won't perish. But with that, with that established in their life, they'll have eternal life. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And I didn't include Acts 2.38 in here, but what do I do after I get saved? Well, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for remission of your sin. And then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And okay. I've even noticed, it's, you know, to try to think back of all my past, right? Even sins known and unknown. I've said that because that's how, you know. But what's an unknown sin to God? That's right. Stupid thought, even. Yeah. You can't unknown anything to God. God even knows what flavor of coffee you're having. 
Yes. If he's going to count the hair on your head. Yeah, he does. I brushed my hair this morning and literally a, a few, several dozen, 50, 100 hairs come out in the comb or brush. They did. They just did. But do you think God's got to recount that? Yeah. One, two, three. No. No. <laughs> no. He just knows. He just knows. When you have a, a particular boat come through, you just kind of can look at the numbers. You've been doing your job so long, you can just kind of look at the numbers of it's a, it's a this and that model, and you know what to build for it. You know what it's going to take to put that thing together at your at your station, right? Yeah. Yeah. God just knows. Just like for some reason you just know when I say boat, your favorite one at work that you enjoy working on can pop populate your head, and you can tell me what number it is, and I wouldn't have a clue. It's a boat. What I'll do you think causes our divide? We covered this uh, just a couple weeks ago. And humble yourself. We divide when we cast our opinions, thoughts, pride, fears, lust, and greed. Our thoughts and actions. When we cast those on other people, that's where we divide. You have to. I want you to. I told you to. You know, how many times have we uh, repeated that uh, nobody likes to be told what to do, but you ask, and most people do about anything. If you ask, Galatians 5, 7 through 9 says, You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? What if you cut in on yourself? Yeah. You ever do a run and you didn't finish because you didn't finish? You quit in your head? They say that almost all athletic situations, a person will quit in their head before they actually stop. Yeah. Now, if you get injured, you blow your knee, you're a whole different ballgame. That kind of of persuasion does not come from one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. Okay, that's Galatians 5, 7 through 9. A little yeast, but let's bring it over to Park Talks. What would yeast be like in Park Talks? How about weeds? A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. Who plants the weeds? Nobody planted the weeds. They just grew there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus, there's, there's a parable where a guy talks about it. Come, someone comes and sows weeds among the wheat, you know. But weeds in, on, on, on the farm and weeds in the gardens I've experienced, nobody planted them. They just grew there. Galatians 5, 13 through 15. You, my brothers and sisters, you were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge your flesh. Pride, greed, lust, Fear, anxiety, worry, stress, depression, your habits, your habits of thought, your past habits of life, your past everything. Wow, could that be what he's talking about? Any chance? Do not use your freedoms to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Humbly in love. Again, let's roll back to what humility is. Less of me, more of everyone else. The entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Got to be humble. You can't do that. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. It happens at work all the time. Red and blue. Two choices. Because I even catch myself. Like, I try. And I catch myself going back at, like, Saying stuff right back at him, and I know we, that book. Yeah. Your tongue. Does your choices in religion, sports, movies, and TVs really matter when in the end it has its design and division? Or, at best, in making a new religion or a new God for a person's life? Again, I ask, what is the variety in the programming we are receiving? For many of us, humility is one of the hardest traits to develop because it has to start from recognition that you are not always right and that you do not have the answers. It also requires an acceptance of yourself, which may find, which many of us find challenging. There are too many version, versions of ourself. We have remade ourselves in so, in so many times, we don't even know who to accept or who we individually truly are. But I do know in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. How do we close the divide? We communicate clearly, consistently, gently, peacefully. In Matthew thirteen fifteen and 16, last couple of scriptures, 
for this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. And this is, again, it comes out of Isaiah 6, 9. He said, Then go tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. People are seeing what's right. They've even seen the messenger of God up close, personal, in face to face, back in the old scripture, and killed him. And then all the disciples, same thing, except John. They put John out on an island somewhere, exiled him, said, you know, go die out there. Again, this is Daniel with Park Talks. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope you look at your varieties and your options that's going on in life and bring them down to a controllable, manageable number. Thank you. Again, this is Daniel with Park Talks. Be blessed, everyone.